What up YouTube, Dungeon Master, back with another video. This week's video, I'm gonna show you how I made this little guy right here. Yep, it lights up, stick around. All right, so what I've got here to start, I've got a, uh, I've got a tea light that flickers. I just got these at the dollar store. Uh, it was a two pack at Dollar Tree. And uh, I'm gonna take this piece of XPS foam here. Um, the size of this doesn't matter as long as it's bigger than the tea light. I'm going to take a piece of double sided tape, put it underneath my tea light here. And I'm gonna kinda push this into the middle. And now we have our circle template to cut out our the hole for our tea light to be recessed on the inside of our forge. So I'm just gonna come in with my hot wire cutter. I'm gonna make sure that my temp is slightly low. I don't wanna, it might be dawdling in a spot and I don't wanna melt a, a big hole, but it's gonna be on the inside anyway, so it doesn't really matter. So I'm just gonna turn it on and Come up against my tea light. Just draw around it. Okay, now I should be able to Pop that out and the tea light will fit. That's perfect, that works for me. So one of the things that I wanna do though is it's just a little too tall, so I wanna come in and trim off just a little bit of this. Um, yeah, I wanna trim off about a quarter of an inch from this, so I'm just gonna bring my guard in here and I'm just gonna kinda eyeball it. It's gonna be just a little bit less than a centimeter. I'm not even gonna lock it down. I'm just gonna rip it like that. Okay, now that's also a little bit too big for a forge. So I'm gonna come in and shrink it down on all the sides here too. So this piece is just so that I can have something to build on. have a much tighter piece now. I think I want to just trim it up just a little bit more. It's a little, still a little bit too big. There we go. That will be where we set our tea light. Here I'm just clipping off the small feet of the tea light just to make sure it's such flush against the table when it's nestled inside of my little uh, foam base. And now using my knife and some finger gauging, I'm going to carve a brick pattern around the outside of our base. For this project, I went a little bit out of order in the way that I did things because I was very uh, meticulous, trying to be meticulous in the way that I assembled it. I didn't really have a plan going into it, so I was just trying to make sure that I nailed all the details. 
And after scoring uh, brick lines using my hobby knife, I came back in with a metal stylus, a ballpoint pen would work. I just, I felt that the stylus gave it the stone more of a sharp uh, bevel than the pen would have. It would have been a little bit smoother. I've used both in the past to varying effects, so use whatever you think would be uh, best for the project. and then continue drawing the brick pattern on the sides. Now, I'm not sure why I ended up taking this thing apart, because in the end you'll see I ended up putting glue on top of the, uh, the LED anyway, so it didn't really make much of a difference that I did this step. So you could skip this if you wanted to, but um, I took it apart so that I could flock the top and paint it without getting the paint on the light. Uh, I could have just covered it with masking tape and it would have achieved the same, same effect and it would have saved a little bit of time, I suppose. So I just uh, took it apart and sanded it to give a rough surface for the to give something for the paint to stick to I was worried that it would end up peeling off the top so I did this but in the end it didn't matter anyway because I ended up covering it in so much flock and for this just used a regular old gray primer nothing special about it just uh, some rust-oleum gray primer I ended up going with a gel super glue here. Uh, I thought it would be a little bit better to hold the um, the flocking on, which I ended up putting on after this. Just using some uh, cat litter, which I felt simulated ashes pretty well. It also simulates gravel pretty well, but beware, it's meant to absorb moisture, so if you use too much water or too much paint or something like that, it might expand and turn mushy. I didn't have that problem with this, I didn't go too heavy on anything. Just be aware that if you use cat litter for something like this, it could end up turning into a muddy mess. Though I'd end up worrying about that more if it was uh, water and not glue that I was using. And at every stage, I tested the LED to make sure you could still see it so that I could undo anything. I didn't want to have to build this thing inside and then not be able to see it afterwards. I decided to use hot glue to fix it in there, I figured it would just be in there quick. And um, it did melt the foam slightly, but again, I went over this afterwards with more flock, and it covered it all up, so I didn't worry too much. And now I just uh, went over the top part here with some black Mod Podge. I decided to hold off on painting the outside, and paint the inside first, uh, so that I could nail the details on that before I decided on a final color for the outside. If you already know what color you want to use for this stuff, go right ahead, but black Mod Podge our Mod Podge and black paint works perfect for sealing foam and it gives it a solid base for the paint to stick to. It's, it works as a very excellent primer. Since I planned on doing actual brick work for the outside, for the top part anyway, um, I decided to make a form for the inside using some uh, non-stick foil. Uh, regular aluminum foil probably would have worked just as well, but I wanted something that my um, PVA glue wouldn't stick to. So I went with this uh, small block that I measured to be just about the size of the interior void inside the oven or inside the forge. This worked out perfectly and none of my glue stuck to it. I had some of these uh, some of these bricks left over from a previous project and uh, just decided to use them again. Since I have so many of them there's no point in me making uh, more bricks but these are just really small cutoffs of 
uh, XPS foam. I actually cut these before I got my procs on using my old homemade foam cutter. Having these laying around saved a lot of time making this project. And you can see I'm just stacking them in a brick pattern using some PVA glue to hold them. I didn't have any tacky glue left, unfortunately I used the last of it. On the previous step I had the last drop to hold the base together, but I only wanted to seal four sides of this uh, piece and leave the front open and leave the bottom open so I could attach it to the base after it was finished. Here I've just got a piece of XPS foam that's about the same size as the top. It's only about a half centimeter thick. And I decided to use the same technique as I did for the other bricks rather than laying the bricks on top. And um, the bricks on the side that you can see here gave it enough of a texture where I didn't worry too much about it. But I did decide to use a straight edge here to keep the, the pieces a little straighter because I figured you're looking down at the piece, you're probably going to see that most, and that and the bricks that I laid out by hand. And uh, this just looks about the same as the rest of it it gives the same kind of brick pattern but it looks a little bit nicer than the rest of it you can't tell the difference when it's finished though it looks it all looks very good I'm using my knife and scoring lines just like I did with the other uh, the base portion of it that the tea lights in and then coming back in with my scribe and scoring the lines again to make them have some depth And then using the uh, age-old crumpled up tinfoil ball technique for adding some texture to the, to the stone. And here I decided that there wasn't enough ash on this thing to make it look realistic to me. So this is when I decided to cover the light and uh, kind of make it built up like a mound in the center, like I pictured uh, Blacksmith Forge would be. I did almost no research looking at this. I pulled a lot of this visual from memory. So if it doesn't look like an actual Blacksmith Forge, it's intentional. I didn't want that. I didn't want it to look like that. I wanted to just use my imagination and let it play. And I had the most fun doing this project that I've had of any project in a while. And I think you can tell that when you watch these when I'm getting really detailed and hyper focused on things. I'm really into this project.
have this uh, little piece of wooden dowel here that I wanted to use for uh, kind of like a semi-burnt log off to the side. And I could have used some of my little Hearst Arts molds to have like an actual kind of uh, fire. But I felt like this was a little bit more in line with what I was trying to accomplish with this, with the handcraft and stuff like that, kind of going a little bit more old school using um, the homemade materials rather than the molds of the purchased miniatures. And I'm just roughing this log up to make it look like it was burned, kind of burned out of the middle a little bit, and then how I paint it later reflects that, uh, this kind of dip, dip that I'm carving in the middle. And I carved a little flat on the bottom so that it, would not, it wouldn't roll away when I glued it on. Now it's time to add some color to this. I'm going to revisit the wet blending technique that I used when I painted the uh, the red dragon and the, the lava base not too long ago. Um, just the center of the fire needs to be the hottest portion and the hottest portions are the lightest portions. So I'm using yellow first of all in the center and then I come in with an orange around the outside. Um, sorry for my bald head being in the way here. I was trying to be very close to this while I was doing it. I picked a very bad camera angle. I painted it with an orange, like I said, and then the yellow, I come in with it while it's still wet and blend it into the orange so that there's a transition between the yellow and the orange while trying to keep the, the center as bright yellow as possible for the, uh, the glowing uh, heat of it. Also, I wanted the most transparent color to be in the center so, because that's where the light is, and I wanted the flicker to be able to show up through the paint, which is another reason why I didn't go overboard with the flock in that center. And after the orange, I blended in a bright red and then to a black around the outside for more of the darkened, cooler ash. So the, the cooler the hot area is, the darker the color. So you go from yellow to orange to red, and in my case to black around the outside. And there's you notice there's black all over it too. I did a little bit of dry brushing of the black for that too, uh, over the top of that. And then I come in with a gray here, um, kind of a darker gray darker than even the brick gray. I just used a regular dark uh, craft smart gray color and uh, dry brushed all over everything to give it that final kind of ashy look. And after another test, yeah, we're ready to start painting more. And I came back in the center here with a little bit of white just to uh, give that center piece a little more presence of heat. It, you can't really notice it in the end though after it being inside. So this step was kind of very, very optional. And then uh, one last dry brushing, I gave it a lighter dry brushing with a lighter gray, as well as dry brushing the stone. And uh, painting my log here, I'm painting that a brown color. And then I covered it with a strong tone wash. Uh, actually, I used uh, Agrax Earthshade, excuse me, and ended up uh, dry brushing black and gray on to give it the charred look. to paint the top piece.
the base. For this next piece, I decided to draw a little bit of inspiration from uh, Wylock's Armory, uh, from his channel. Uh, he had done something with a, a tube and a straw at one point, and I thought about that when I was piecing this together. I decided to grab a, a bendy straw and try it, and it's perfect for what it seems. I needed a little bit of stability in my piece, though, so I decided to fill it. Uh, once I had the shape, I, I settled on the 90 degree shape. and. Found a put a hole in the back of the piece to to put it in, and then I decided I was going to fill it with some epoxy resin in order to help it keep its shape so that it didn't warp and or chip the paint that I would put on it later. I got this little syringe of epoxy resin at Michael's for about six bucks, and I don't know if it was worth it or not. It was pretty easy to use because of the, the syringe tip and the, the fact that it was uh, kind of like, it was mixing as I was doing it rather than having to mix it by hand and scoop it in. So that made it a little bit more convenient, and since I had it laying around, I decided to use it. I tried to use hot glue, but I just, I ended up melting my first attempt at the straw. So this was by far and away the easiest and best method to keep it stable. And then I took it over to my spray area and decided to give it a coating in the same gray primer. I then uh, fixed it in place using some hot glue. then came in and touched up the end of the straw that didn't quite get the paint on it, the, the gray uh, primer. I just used the black Mod Podge and then some black paint to go over that, and that ended up fixing it fine. To achieve a brick color, I decided to, uh, I actually googled how to make mix a terracotta because I had no idea what colors were involved and I didn't really want to waste paint guessing. So I decided to, to google it and ended up being a mixture of red and orange. Only I added just a hint of brown to it to make it slightly darker uh, color, and it was actually a, a barn red that I added, and not quite a brown, excuse me, so it was more of a, red, a darker dark red. And then I just dry brushed this on and layered it up until I got the color that I liked. And in between, I just hit it with my blow dryer to speed up the process.
At this point, I was confident that the inside was done, so I decided to glue the two halves of the uh, piece together and go from there. And I gave the stovepipe a coating in watered down black craft paint. And here I've got some Craft Smart Silver, which I'm going to use to dry brush over the top of the black paint and give it a, a metallic steel look, kind of dark, sooty uh, metal. I, I would have used a gun metal for this, but I think it was too dark. And I think dry brushing the silver over the black gives you a similar but less muted effect. Use your own discretion on this and get the effect that you like. After I did that, I did a little bit of a dry brushing of black from the top down. Using a, going in the reverse direction, that gave the appearance of a, uh, a sooty top to the stovepipe, which gave it a nice little effect, which I really liked. This is one of my favorite steps. This is when the details really start to pop. I decided to use my um, my army painter washes for this part. This was a small little terrain build and I didn't see um, any point in skimping on the wash for this. So I used a army painter strong tone, which is a very dark brown wash, not necessarily black. And man, it really popped those bricks. It did darken them down slightly, so I, I do have to brighten them up later but it really made the details on this thing just stand out so much and I really liked how it came out. And then I decided to give the ashes at the front of the forge uh, a dark tone wash just to make them stand out a little more as well. Of course this did darken it down and again I had to do a dry brushing over the top to bring some of the brightness back to it. And I don't know why but other maybe just the fact that it had the, the word oil in it. I decided to use Nuln Oil from uh, Citadel to do the, the stovepipe and that, it was a great wash it was the right color but I could have used the dark tone as well on this and I think it would have been fine. But just because of the fact that it said oil on it, I was like, oh, hey, that would look nice on metal. So, and it does. It does look good. So I use whatever you like. Again, it's all up to you. And then uh, just uh, dry brushed over it again using my terracotta color to bring some of the color back. So that I didn't have to worry about it looking too dull. And um, it, it got rid of some of the shine too, which was nice, even though I ended up giving it a dull coat afterwards. For the appearance of ash at the front of the forge, I figured, you know, loading wood in and out and all that stuff, it might have ash around the outside and on the front. So I dry brushed the opening slightly with the gray in order to give it that appearance. And it just livened it up a little bit, made it look a little bit more realistic. And here you can see it with uh, the other pieces on the table, including the, the anvil that I made all the way back in my Dwarven Trap Room video, which was actually the inspiration for this video. Uh, this piece, remembering that I had made this anvil and not having a forge to go along with it, ended up uh, coming out pretty good. I'm really happy with the result of this.
Thank you everybody for sticking around to the end. This, this was it was a fun build. I, there's nothing else for me to say about it. It was it was challenging. It's sm incredibly small. It's the kind of build that I love doing the most. I love miniaturizing things. Not even necessarily the big mini builds, but these little detailed things. I love doing these little things. So if you like what I'm doing, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe below. If you're if you're not already a subscriber, I'd love to have you. Leave a comment. Let me know if you uh, if there's anything you would have changed, something you would have done differently. I know that's open in the, the can of worms, drinking from the fire hose, whatever you want to call it. But and I really appreciate the input that you guys have left me. It helps me improve as a content creator you know uh, get uh then if you'd like to help the channel grow, please head on over to Patreon and consider becoming a subscriber for as little as a dollar a month. You get access to behind the scenes footage, uh, get um, early releases when I can. I have a job, so it's kind of hard to do early releases. Uh, you, you also get to vote in polls every month. I still owe you guys a poll. I'm aware of that. I'm working on it. Um, and in the meantime, you get to enjoy content like this. Uh, I pay what you can model, so as little as a dollar a month. And I uh, keep it short and sweet this week. I'm your Dungeon Master. Thank you so much for watching. Till next time. Peace.